Are you serious? Are you serious? Well, there may be some good news as it relates to the war in Damascus and the war in Syria. Russia is just breaking news just released. President Vladimir Putin uh, has dismissed criticism of Russian arms sales to Damascus on Tuesday, that's today, June the 4th, 2013, but said Moscow had not yet delivered the S-300 missiles that Western governments say could prolong the Syrian civil war. Putin defended Russia's stance on Syria after the talks with European Union leaders, criticizing them for not extending an embargo on member states selling weapons to Syrian rebels and warning against any foreign military intervention in Syria. But he held the door open to diplomacy as Russia and the United States are trying to bring the warring sides together for an international peace conference, saying that the S-300 missiles had not yet been sent to Bashar Assad's government. Uh, as for the S-300, it is really one of the best defense systems in the world, if not the best. Think it is, this is, of course, a serious weapon, said Putin, as he was meeting with the European President Herman von Rommel and European Commission President Jose Manuel Barcero in a central Russian city. But he added, we do not want to disturb the balance in the region. The contract was signed several years ago. It has not been fulfilled yet. Now, I want to stop for a minute. Just because it's not fulfilled doesn't mean the first shipment of S-300 uh, ballistic, supersonic, high-powered anti-aircraft missiles haven't been delivered. Actually, Assad says he has them. The first shipment are here, he said. And Israel told Russia, you don't want to send those. You do, we will destroy them. And Russia said to Israel, you don't want to do that because we're sending Russian officers with them. Meanwhile, America continues to support the freedom fighters, the Syrian rebels. And here's the sad thing. The Syrian rebels are made up of Muslim Brotherhood freedom fighters from Libya and Al-Qaeda, rogue terrorist groups, kidnappers, thugs, and thieves that were photographed with John McCain when he made his surprise visit on Memorial Day on May 27, 2013. So this thing is getting real murky and real muddy. But one thing I can tell you, it is prophesied in the Bible. We know it is in Isaiah 17, verse 1. The burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city and shall be a ruinous heap. Also in Jeremiah 49, verses 23 through 27, those verses tell you exactly how the city of Damascus will slowly fall apart as it will be gripped in fear. People will die. Young men will be falling in the streets. The men of war are going to be cut off. There's going to be fire in the walls of Damascus. I mean, all of that is explained. So there's a process taking place as the uh, and then we have the rioting going on now, a little bit of protesting going on in Turkey. The United States news media, I saw on MSNBC, were trying every way in the world to prop this up as another Arab Spring situation. First of all, there is no such thing as an Arab Spring. The Arab Spring is a lie. Basically, what it was, was a Muslim Brotherhood revival that was brought on, really instigated, if you will, by President Barack Obama when he went to Cairo, Egypt, uh, on uh, July the 4th, 2009. He should have been home having a barbecue in the backyard of the White House, shooting off a few firecrackers, instead of sitting over in Cairo, Egypt, firing up the radical Islamic extremists that they could rise above the fray and causing Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, and Yemen to revolt on their current governments, though they were corrupt, 
the replacement governments that took over for Ben Ali and Jose Mubarak and Muammar Gaddafi and uh, Ali Alabala Saleh were four different versions of radical Islamic Muslim Brotherhood. And that's who America is backing in the Syrian conflict. Now the problem is there that the, whether you get Assad stays in power, he hates Israel, and is working very close with Iran, North Korea, and Hezbollah, and now Russia. The other alternative is that Assad falls, and you get the Muslim Brotherhood Al-Qaeda crowd on the other side, both of which have sworn enemies of Israel and have declared holy jihads against Jerusalem. You know, I'm writing a new book called Jerusalem Jihad. It'll be available for pre-order here very soon. It's coming along real well and should be available uh, by the end of July. We're going to, uh, let me just say to you, it's a sequel to our book we wrote, Mark of the Beast, RFID, that we've had nine different uh, things we wrote in this book that have come to pass since we wrote the book and sent it to the publishers on July the 1st, 2012, including I wrote that the Pope would resign. Pope Benedict the Sixteenth would resign of health concerns and Vatican scandals, which is exactly what he did. Uh, also, we wrote in the book that Mohammed Mercy would become the president of Egypt. We wrote it before he was elected. There was 13 candidates. We even put his picture here. He did win. He is the fierce king, the cruel Lord, as prophesied in the Bible in Isaiah 19. Now, when I wrote this book, I didn't prophesy these things would happen. But uh, I do believe the Spirit of the Lord does move upon us, and there's no question that nine of these events have come to pass already, and many others are in play. Uh, we wrote the book based on current world events that have happened, Bible prophecy that says what's going to happen, and we wrote our own fictitious, in-time, apocalyptic scenario of how this thing could play out. Well, my next book, Jerusalem Jihad, takes it from the perspective, same time frame or so, but takes it from the perspective, from the eyes of a couple from Jerusalem and how the world stage plays out there as well as around the world, and America included. So it's a powerful book, and it will be available very soon. I want you to give your life to Jesus Christ. You know, when I stand up against abominations of sin, uh, on different sexual perversions, I get beat up by the crowd that wants to promote it. And some of them want to promote it and say they're Christians. Um, when I speak about current world events that relates to the Bilderberg Group or, or the New World Order, I get bashed by that crowd that wants to promote it or maybe even participating in it. When I speak against radical Islam and its hatred for the Jews and Christians, that crowd rises up and I get smacked by them because they're part of it. What I want to do is just keep preaching the truth, and the truth will set you free. You have to come to Jesus Christ. The problem with the New World Order, they don't want Jesus Christ. Radical Islam does not want Jesus Christ. The crowd that is promoting sexual promiscuity, uh, homosexuality, and different perversions, abortions, and different types of things, they don't want Jesus Christ based on the Bible. Some of them, though... Most of them are atheists. They don't even retain God in their knowledge, which is what the Bible said would happen in Romans 1. Some of them say they're Christians and that we are not loving people by exposing the sin. It's nowhere, you're, 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 you're missing the whole point. We love all people. We love all people. We love the gay community. We love everyone that's involved in homosexuality. But the sin they're committing is an abomination and will destroy their soul if they remain in that lifestyle. We love the heroin addict. We love all heroin addicts. But if they continue that sinful practice, it will destroy their soul, their body, their minds, and they'll be lost. Jesus can set all people free from all sins. And none of us are perfect. We know that. We're all saved by grace through faith. So listen, as I'm telling you now, and I'm smiling, Jesus loves you and we love you, but you can't stay in that sin or any sin because it will destroy your soul. Give your life to Jesus Christ. He loves you. He can, he, he's the one that died on the cross and he's the one that can set us all free and save us by his precious blood in Jesus' name.